In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. My brothers and sisters, as we come to the altar of God here at church, to the altar of our hearts at home, we acknowledge our sins and prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And let us pray. By your help, we beseech you, Lord our God. May we walk eagerly in that same charity with which, out of love for the world, your Son handed himself over to death. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. The days are coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their fathers, the day I took them by the hand to lead them forth from the land of Egypt. For they broke my covenant, and I had to show myself their master, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will place my law within them and write it upon their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer will they have need to teach their friends and relatives how to know the Lord. All, from the least to the greatest, shall know me, says the Lord, for I will forgive their evil doing and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness. In the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt, and of my sin cleanse me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A clean heart create for me, O God and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Create a clean heart in me, O God. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. I will teach transgressors your ways, and sinners shall return to you. Create a clean heart in me, O God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. In the days when Christ Jesus was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death and he was heard because of his reverence. Sound though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered. And when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. The word of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Whoever serves me must follow me, says the Lord, and where I am, there also will my servant be. 
Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Some Greeks who had come to worship at the Passover feast came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder. But others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death he would die. The Gospel of the Lord. The Greeks said to Philip, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. They wanted to meet him. So Philip told Andrew, and the two of them told Jesus. But you know, Jesus never did go uh, to meet them. Actually, the scriptures tell us that Jesus left and hid from them. Uh, it's not that he was afraid of his visitors, of course. It's just that he wanted to give them what they were looking for. He wanted them to see him and to come to him, but not with a handshake and a conversation. He was sort of done with that. The time had come for people to know Jesus in a different way, uh, in a much more glorious and terrible way. The time had come for him to be lifted up from the earth on the cross so that everybody could see him and understand who he was and what he was really about. The time had come. It's why the gospel today has, has an ominous feel, like there's a storm brewing. Even that voice from heaven here in the gospel came across as like thunder, uh, one of those rolling thunders that just says something's coming, the wind is changing. And this ominous feel is reflected in our churches too. It's why the statues and images are covered over it seems just a little bit darker in here today. The hour has come. The storm is upon us. And over the next couple of weeks, especially during the Triduum, we'll remember how the storm of the Passion unfolded and how Jesus showed himself to us through it. You know, if we ever find ourselves asking, Jesus, who are you? Or saying to ourselves, you know, I'm supposed to know who Jesus is, but I don't even know where to start. Well, now is the time to pay attention, these next couple of weeks, especially the Triduum. They reveal a lot about who Jesus is and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And they reveal about, a lot about who we are in relation to God, in particular, that we and all people are precious to God. And he would go through anything, even his own torture and death, to protect his beloved. You know, so often today, when we want to evangelize people and to tell them about Jesus, we avoid talking about the passion. You know, we prefer to talk about how Jesus healed people and how he went about preaching the good news of hope and joy and love, and that's all good. And on the one hand, this is understandable. I mean, the horror of Jesus' arrest and trial, his scourging and execution are, well, they're horrible. I suppose it'd be like, you know, going to the, going to the movies on a first date and watching Psycho, you know, it's a little bit intense. On the other hand, Jesus' death and passion and resurrection are the ultimate showcase of exactly who Jesus is and what he's about. If we want people to know about Jesus, 
Well, then the passion should be pretty near to the, top, to the top of our toolbox, right alongside the good news of hope and joy and love. When those Greeks came to Philip and said, we would like to see Jesus, Jesus' response was to give them exactly what they were looking for. They saw him lifted up on the cross. Everybody saw him. They saw his love poured out for humanity. They saw his reverence for the Father and for himself as the Lamb of God. They saw a new covenant being ratified between God and his people. They saw the glory of Jesus and the sacred heart of Jesus on full display as he carried his cross and was nailed to it and died upon it. They saw the grain of wheat die so that new life could come from it. Those visitors, those visitors had come to see Jesus, and they certainly did get to see the Jesus, the real Jesus, during the storm of the Passion. The question is, did those visitors stick around? Did they stick around, or they, were they sort of put off by what they saw in Jesus? Well, the scriptures don't say. It's an open question for them, for us, and for anybody who encounters Christ crucified. Do we accept Jesus as he's trying to reveal himself to us through his passion? Or do we opt for, you know, a different Jesus? If we ever find ourselves asking, Jesus, who are you? Or saying to ourselves, I'm supposed to know who Jesus is, but I don't know where to start. Then now is the time to pay attention. The hour has come. Jesus is about to show us again who he really is through his passion and death and resurrection. that we profess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. For the shepherds and leaders of the church, that as they serve and evangelize, their words would spark true hope in those who are lost or in darkness. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who serve our country through elected or appointed offices, that God would bless them with courage and integrity, wisdom and prudence. Let us pray to the Lord. For those in need of God's healing grace, including Lynn, Carrie, Paul, Marlene, Chris, those on our prayer chain, and those we hold in thought and prayer, let us pray to the Lord. For the diocesan ministries supported by our contributions to the Bishop's Appeal, May their work be effective in touching people who need to encounter the good news of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. For catechumens, as they prepare for initiation into the church at Easter, that they encounter the joy of knowing God and commit themselves to him with trust and hope, let us pray to the Lord. For those who are considering a vocation to the ordained priesthood, that the Holy Spirit would bless them with an increase of faith, hope, and love, let us pray to the Lord. for the prayers written in our parish books of prayer, and for the prayers we offer to the Lord from the altar of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. For the family and friends of St. Clair Parish for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have fallen asleep in Christ, may they know the full depth of God's love for them in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. God, our Father, we come to you today with these prayers, spoken all the prayers in our hearts. We lay them before your throne of mercy, and we ask you to receive them and to answer them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Amen. 
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Hear us, Almighty God, and having instilled in your servants the teachings of the Christian faith, graciously purify them by the working of this sacrifice, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faithful await the sacred Paschal feasts with the joy of minds made pure so that, more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity, and participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Jana in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, O Jana in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love, For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, 
We celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead. And looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim, who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and David, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives and reigns for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior. Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
And let us pray. We pray, Almighty God, that we may always be counted among the members of Christ, in whose body and blood we have communion, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And bow down now for the blessing. Bless, O Lord, your people, who long for the gift of your mercy, and grant that what at your prompting they desire, they may receive by your generous gift. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the divine power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Thank you.